Arc Junkies presents Weld Wednesday with AWS. Brought to you by the American Welding Society. And now your host, Jason Becker. Rachel, welcome to Weld Wednesdays with AWS. I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your schedule to be here. Thank you for having me. No problem. I, I had the pleasure of meeting you at an AWS conference that I didn't even know you were going to be there. I had followed you on Instagram for a while because I, I seen in one of your stories you posted, uh, I think you were doing a lecture, uh, lecture on FluxCore arc welding. And you had your yeah. board all written out with all the different texts and specs. And I was like, man, that looks like exactly how I teach this program. And then, you know, I tried to recruit you to come work at my school, but that's beside the point. Um, so I, I just wanted to ask, like, how did you get into welding? So I got into welding. I wanted to go back to school to find something that I could make a career out of. Um, and here in the state of Georgia, they actually have this amazing program called the high, the high demand career initiative is what it was called when I got into it. Okay. I think it's since changed names, but it was basically, 17 in-demand fields that you could go to school for and the state would actually pay for it. Oh, nice. So zero student debt. Um, that appealed to me. And as I read through the list, there were some really great options, but when I saw welding and joining at the bottom of the list, I immediately pictured myself like sparks flying with the hood and the safety glasses and just, yeah, it really appealed to me. So I thought, okay, I did some research. I found a local technical college near me, happened to be a uh, linear technical college in Barrow County. I drove out, talked with both the instructors and literally applied that same day. I just knew that it was where I was meant to be. The instructors were um, very excited to have a girl in the welding lab. They had had a few female students before me, but um, they, you know, saying all the praises that, you know, girls usually weld better than guys and have attention to detail that, um, the guys really have to have patience for to get there. So they told me to look up women in the industry. I found Jesse Combs and Barbie the welder and a few other ones and thought I can do this. Like seeing those badass females um, out there just owning it, not being ashamed of being kind of different and outside of this, you know, the norm and just absolutely crushing it. So I went through the program when I was in high school, I was never a very good student. Um, but when I went to college for welding and joining, I was a 4.0 student, uh, always turned my assignments in early, had to be forced out of the lab sometimes, just really enjoyed. It made a difference. When I enjoyed what I was learning and felt challenged in that way, it shined in my academics. It, it does. And I've, I've noticed that. And like, I try to explain that to people all the time. It's like, when you like, picture yourself back in high school and you wonder, you know, when am I ever going to use this math? When am I ever going to use this geometry? When am I going to use this science? Like none of this, it's not relevant to me. So there's no point in me locking it into my mental repository to be able to just regurgitate it on test day and then forget about it again. You know, like why, you know, give me a reason to understand, give me a reason to learn this stuff. And then like, once you get into the welding lab and you're like, oh, okay, argon is an inert gas. Boom. There, now we're talking chemistry. Okay. It doesn't, give or receive anything it's completely inert and you know we start talking about pythagorean theorem oh now it makes sense because you know if i'm working on rise over run for a slope of a set of stairs okay boom now it makes sense or you know my algebra trying to figure out you know how much material do i need like all of it starts to make sense and sink in so i could definitely see how you'd be a 4.0 student in welding and not so much in high school and, and a lot of people see that they see the grades that students get in a welding class and then they're like oh it's welding it's just easy or they're just giving yeah. grades away. And it's like, that's not always the case. No, not at all. There were a few students that I went to school with that didn't finish the program because they just, you know, they didn't have the passion for it that I have. I think you really have to have that passion for, you know, making things and being kind of creative um, in a structured environment sometimes. But being creative uh, can really help you in those kinds of situations. Definitely. 
So what did, what did you do after welding school? Um, after welding school, well, while I was in welding school, my instructor was on the executive board for the Atlanta section. Um, and he saw some potential in me. So he invited me on the board as the student liaison. And as a student liaison, I went to membership presentations um, to help try to inform students of the benefits of being a student member of the American Welding Society. And it helped me learn more about the organization in and of itself. Mm -hmm. The more I learned, the more I wanted to get involved. So I quickly went from student liaison to an executive board member. And then now I'm currently the treasurer of the Atlanta section. It's, it's interesting how that, how fast it moves and everything. Like the more you get involved, but then again, the more you get involved, the more you get out of it. Exactly. So what was exactly. it? I mean, like, it's, what did, what did you do in your, so you started off as a student member and then kind of worked your way into like the actual executive committee. I did. So there was something there for you to stick around. Oh yeah. Well, and they also, so the demographic of my Atlanta section, I'm, the youngest, well, I was the youngest person at that time. We've now taken on two other um, younger members to the executive board. So they're they're seeing that at some point they need to hand the reins down to somebody. And they've been fortunate enough to find um, go-getting young people like myself, Chase, and Austin. So we're kind of, they're setting it up for us to take over the section at some point. Nice. And they have faith in us to do that. I, You know, the chairman that we have now, Jay Mahan, he's incredible he's uh he is the perfect manager he knows exactly what we need to do when we need to do it and how we're going to get it done and he just delegates everything out so it's working really well but when i came on we had renee angeron as the chairman and I, he was just incredible um took me under his wing basically treated me like i was his own daughter and uh we had a really great relationship with him as chairman he's now the secretary i believe okay or, yeah renee renee's yeah. a great guy i got to meet him i think it was my first so like once we became a section here in central florida i got to meet renee at the first district conference and he's he's such a cool guy and but like here in florida you know we've got like four or five different sections you guys have yeah. one that covers the entire yeah. span of georgia so we have we have North Central Florida. We have Central Florida. We've got, you know, this, uh, Florida West Coast, Florida, you know, like we've got like five of them here. You guys have one yeah. to cover the entire state. The entire state. And it is quite a task. We we try to delegate out things to go, you know, we'll do stuff in Atlanta or in North Georgia. And then we try to do something in South Georgia just to kind of, but it's, it's a lot of traveling. And I actually do enjoy that. Um, going to the different welding competitions and getting to see those students that I see so much of myself in, um, and just thinking about where their future is going to go and how, you know, they're, they have a career that they can literally, they'll never be without work. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing about welding is like, once you learn that skill set, and it doesn't matter if you want to be a lifelong welder, you know, once you learn that skill set, you can go make, you know, a good amount of money. You can put yourself through school if you want to get into something else. And if that doesn't work out, you still have a skill to fall back on. And it's exactly. kind of like what I did. I did the same thing, you know, like I was, I started off as a welder and then I was like, you know, I, I want to use my, my GI bill. I want to go get a degree because people tell me if you want to get ahead in life, go get a degree. So I got, I got, a, mm -hmm. I, I got my degree and then I realized I don't want to work in that field. Even though it was construction, it was more office work and administrative stuff. And I was like, I don't want to do that. So I fell right back into welding. You know, the, yeah. you never lose that skill set once you learn it. Exactly. And then we, we got the chance to meet at the Excel mentor welding competition up in Dallas, Georgia, which I thought that was cool because you were kind of uh, wearing two hats that day. You guys were competing and you entered the, the little locomotive into the welding contest, but then you were also there recruiting and promoting the AWS Atlanta or Georgia section. I should just, I should say. Yeah, exactly. The Georgia section. Yeah. It's, I've actually had to do that a few times now, um, represent either Fortis and the American Welding Society or, you know, representing myself as the tiny welder in the American Welding Society. And it's, it's kind of fun. It's like a little juggling act, but I think it's really cool to be able to show people, uh, you know, you can have goals and aspire for greatness and still be a very approachable, normal person. Um, and I just really like talking with people. So when they realize like, oh, okay, you're with, you're affiliated with the Atlanta section. What else do you do? Oh, you're a welding instructor at Fortis college. Oh, you're also trying to grow a, you know, an Instagram page, which 
that should really come with a, a guidebook trying to grow an Instagram account. That's no, that's no joke. <laughs> I don't know how the algorithm works. I don't know how my stuff ends up on the for you page. It's the most random things, but I'm learning as I go. Yeah. It's, it's just relevant content and it, it depends on, I would imagine how I haven't re- like really dug deep into it. I, I don't post nearly as often as I, I should, or I used to, um, but yeah, there's there's definitely some hacks and stuff to it. You can pull up on YouTube. There's different videos and tutorials, Three songs and things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to play like what's current, but like with the, the weird thing, and not to get off on a tangent, but like the music selection on Instagram sucks for trying to make reels. It's way better it's on terrible. TikTok. But then if you use the oh content from TikTok and you repost it on Instagram, they don't like that. They want you to use their software to develop the reel and then post it from there. Exactly. So they they, they kind of like ding you for that. Song off. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So now going with, um, you know, what, what are the, some of the benefits that you've realized, you know, by participating and being active with the American Wilding Society, what are some of the benefits you've found just as an instructor? Well, actually let's start off as a student because you started off, you're in a kind of a rare situation where you went from student into like the executive section. So you know, what are, what are some of the benefits that you, you've seen just as a student getting into AWS? Um, as a student, some of the benefits that I saw immediately were the number of grants and scholarships that were afforded to me or, you know, uh, available to me just for being a member of the American Welding Society. Um, anyone can apply for those members or for those scholarships, but they always take the members first and they'll select the committee takes and selects from the ones who are already members. So I thought, okay, I'm already going to be at the top of the list. I didn't need the scholarship money to pay for my tuition. Um, but I was applying for grants and things to try and get a welder once I got out of school or, you know, different opportunities like that. I also saw a benefit because as a student member, you, you get a copy of the welding journal. So I immediately, every month I had a copy of the journal so I could see what was going on as far as events in my area and across, um, the U S um, they also had really great articles in there. And I just, in the beginning, I was like a sponge. I just wanted to soak up any kind of welding knowledge or information or cool thing that I could. So I love the welding journal. Um, they also have discounts. I didn't really, as a student, I didn't, I knew about them, but I didn't really, it didn't pertain to me. Now that I'm an instructor, I'm starting to look more into the discounts that they offer for the code books, Mm -hmm. because at some point I want to study to get my CWI and just continue to kind of like Batman at this point, just get different gadgets on my belt. Yeah. So that's a good way to do it. And like, like you said, the discounts help a lot. And like, I'm going to, I'm going to let a trade secret with AWS out of the bag. If you apply to become a CWI, part of Mm -hmm. your initial fee goes to you becoming a member. So you you might as well become a member up front for, you know, a hundred bucks. It's like $80 plus, you know, or $88 plus $12 processing fee. You might as well just become a member up front because by the time you buy your first first code book, it's already paid for your membership. And then you buy your standard terms and definitions. And then you buy your welding symbols book. And then you buy the wit book and then you register for the class. Like you're getting a discount for all those items. Why not, you know, become a member first? You're going to be a member by proxy once you're done anyway. So pay for it up front. 100% so that you can reap the rewards. Yeah. And becoming a CWI, it's it's opened a lot of doors for me. You know, like we just became an accredited testing facility at our school uh, down here in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's just been an awesome opportunity. And the more I start digging into it, it's like, man, there's, there's just so much more to learn. And you fall down yeah. that rabbit hole once again, and I kind of get re-energized. And it's like, oh man, now I'm writing, you know, pre-qualified welding procedures, and you know, picking up uh, copies of SWPSs, and then analyzing other companies' welding procedures, and you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, this isn't up to snuff, man. Like, you can't get these results with these settings. Like, but I can help you, you know, configure this to where where it's actually going to work, and then you know, you're going to want to have those documents on file. So, and then the yeah. networking aspect. Have you found a big benefit in the networking? Huge, absolutely huge. Um, and after I saw you at the district conference, I turned around and went to Miami for the leadership symposium nice. and that in and of itself, it was three days of just absolute, like, I just felt like a totally different person when I left there because they, it was all about teaching us leadership skills that we could bring back to our section to help 
improve turnout for section meetings, like all things that we had been talking about as a section. So I literally came home with a playbook of things that we could do differently. Um, it also just being in that room of people who are so excited about welding, excited to be a part of the American welding society, and then learning all their other little quirks. Cause the thing about welders, we're not just welders. We do lots of things. Mm -hmm. We're creative people by nature. Like I'm, um, a few of the people I met there, like some of them w did woodworking. Some of them were like home chefs, like did their own experimental cooking and things. So just learning the different personalities of everybody was really cool. But I came home from that trip with 22, um, felt like close friends. And we, through the membership, through the, the member portal, they actually have different boards and things. So before we left the conference, they already had a board set up for us where we could talk with each other and share news that was going on. And I've actually, I, you know, I feel really close to these people, but it grew from there. Meeting those people introduced me to other people. The more events I do with the American Welding Society, I'm exposed to more people like Gary Kanarska. He's the nicest guy on the planet. He's a super cool he's dude. he's CEO. Yeah. Yeah. He's like really a pro. You don't think like when you think CEO, you think like uptight suit and tie, but like Gary's just like real down to earth. He'll just sit down and have a chat with you and just relax and kick it and, you know, speak welder, you know? Exactly. He was so nice. I got to meet him in Miami and then, um, he actually, his uncle just moved to Atlanta. So I'm going to try to get his uncle connected with the Atlanta section. Oh, cool. Yeah. But he's just such a nice guy. And I, he recommended that I get on LinkedIn Yep. I should have been on it way sooner. Got to get on LinkedIn. So, a lot yeah, of opportunities on LinkedIn. Some incredible opportunities on LinkedIn. It's like Facebook um, for also, adults. Basically, yeah, like a business Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I also saw that the American Welding Society has a jobs and webs uh, jobs and welding website. Yes. Where it has all kinds of featured welding jobs. You can search by area, by job specific. I think, I think that's a really amazing tool that they've come out with. Yeah. I've turned a lot of my students onto that because they're like, Hey, do you have any connections in this area? Like, Ooh, that's a tough one. Like, I mean, like I've, I've had the chance, you know, through the AWS to network with a lot of people, you know? So if like, if somebody's going up to New Jersey, I can call Stephanie Hoffman. If somebody's going to Louisiana, I can call Jeremy Whitmore. If I, if somebody's going to St. Louis, I can call my, my buddy, Travis Jumper. These are all people yeah. that I got to meet at the instructors Institute through AWS and, mm -hmm. you know, some of them, you know, we got to meet at, uh, again at the, uh, the leadership symposium, but like outside of this, these areas and, and my buddy, uh, Hugo up in Pennsylvania, but like outside of those areas, it's like, man, I really don't know anybody in, you know, Nebraska or, you know, New Iowa. Mexico, but if you go to mm -hmm. careers and welding, you know, uh, I think it's dot org, like mm -hmm. you can find local jobs in those areas. Oh Yeah tons of jobs they've actually done a whole lot in the terms of like bringing different platforms online for you to be able to find those kinds of resources like they also have the um the welding workforce data.com that's a cool website yeah. oh my gosh i can i can just scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and then right back to the top mm -hmm. um, i like how the graphics move um but it's got incredible data on there about how the job market is now what it's projected to be um, statistics about uh, what the age bracket in welding is right now, the demographic as far as women to men uh, in minorities. Yeah, I, I think it's really incredible what they're doing to try to get that information out there to show that, you know, if you want a career that you're never going to have to look for a job, that you're always going to be able to find good paying steady work that you can t take real pride in. I think that's incredible. Cause if I had known, or if I didn't think there was a stigma related to technical college, when I was in high school, I think I could be so much farther along in my welding career mm -hmm. if I had just been exposed to it a little bit sooner. Yeah. And that, that welding workforce data website, I've actually used that because I'm, I'm, I'm in the process right now of restructuring my current program. I want to, cause it's, it's two levels. We got entry level and then we have an advanced class. I want to combine the two and just by showing my administration, like the data that's on that website saying, Hey, look, this is the need for welders. If we switch over mm -hmm. to this new program, we can crank them out, you know, a lot faster, but still maintain that level of quality. We just don't have that yep. big, you know, three to four week gap in between classes. It's all encompassed yeah. class now. It's all put together. The students are here, you know, a little bit less, you know, contact hours, but they're here mm -hmm. more throughout the week. So now I have their attention for a lot longer. 
and you know we can push you know we can we can make them better trained and then we can train them faster you know in, on on their schedule you know instead of like 20 weeks plus you know whatever the break's going to be you know we can we can get yeah. rid of all that and just put it all in one class that's was, really smart i was able to show them that debt or that data and say hey look this is the like the need the current need for welders in the u.s you know and say it's not going this this need isn't going away because we're not going to hit it for a while we're not going to meet that no, need for a while and there's so many projected to um, retire like there's more than 160,000 welders are set to retire um but that's pretty incredible and that's just in the next i think five years is mm-hmm. what that, that reference. Um, but it's, and then they also have the national median salary listed on there. Yeah. And I think it's also on the careers and welding page as well, but, um, it's pretty incredible what welders in certain areas can make, um, as far as like boiler makers, iron workers, um, underwater welders, which that's something that I'm definitely, I want to try underwater welding. Have you not done that point. yet? Not yet. Okay, so I'll put you in contact with some people because they run all kinds of workshops throughout the year. I went down to, mm-hmm. um, oh damn it, I'll have to I'll have to look it up. Uh, Ocean Corp in Houston, Texas. Ocean Corp, yeah. So I went down there. I went down there last year and got to dive with them and do some underwater welding. I even got certified in a two F fillet joint uh, for underwater stick welding. So that was pretty cool. That's awesome. And it was like an, a and legit I'm- certification. They sent me the the cert because like I was like, can I take the coupon home with me? And they're like, no, we actually have to send it out for testing. And I was, well, I mean, they didn't have to. They're like, if you take it, we but can't test it. it. And I was like, well, yeah. let me get that cert. Yeah, just I got a picture of it, so it worked out. But I mean, they do. Um, I think they do some stuff for women in welding. Uh, you know, like oh. women in welding month. You know, so you can go down there and do it. You know, whenever they they pop that off. Uh, but they all have mm-hmm. they have all kinds of different uh, openings for people to go down there and and try it out and see if they like it. Yeah, I definitely want to give that a try. I just you know, I don't think I'd want to do that as a profession, but just to be able to say that, oh yeah, I welded underwater, or yeah. you know, I cut some metal underwater. Well, that was the thing is like you know, ninety percent of what they do isn't welding at all. So your commercial mm-hmm. diver welding just makes up about ten percent of it, and if they can pull it up on dry land or up on the boat and weld it and then put it back in the water and bolt it back in place, that's what they're going to do. So they use welding as a last resort, but everybody's like, I'm going to be an underwater welder. And it's like, okay, you're going to be an underwater rigger, an underwater connector, an underwater cleaner. You know, you might get to weld a little bit, but it's not going to be like a full-time job. And don't get me wrong, there's probably, you know, a few instances where that's what you do. You're an underwater welder, you know, but I mean, you've got to have stacks and stacks of certs and make yourself highly employable and kind of be one of those specialty type welders for that exactly but it's, it's definitely a cool experience in a really small box yeah. yeah it's definitely a cool experience I, I went down there i was there with uh stephanie hoffman and, and ray ripple and scott robbie and jason sasaki and tyler sassy it was it was really cool we and ray cut cut out like a um a four inch diameter piece of steel and concrete with an exothermic cutter underwater and you should have like you should have seen her face when she like come back to the surface and everything like holding that piece above her head. She's like, "I did it!" It was, and you can't oh see once God. you start cutting with that stuff, you can't see nothing. The whole, the whole pool turns to chocolate milk, and, and essentially oh you can't see God. nothing. So I mean, that's what they told us. They're like, "We'll save the cutting for the end of the day because if somebody cuts in there, yeah. you're not going to see anything in there for the next couple of days. So we'll we'll do that at the end." And Ray was just so burned, stoked yeah. to jump in there, jump in there, and, and cut that piece out. She's such an awesome person. She She's is. one of my favorite people ever, and I've never met her in person. But when she comes to Fab Tech this year, I'm I'm very excited to meet her in person. I was going to ask her. You going? You you've got to go to Fab Tech this year. It's in Atlanta, and as an AWS member, that's another perk. You get free admission. Exactly. So I'm definitely going to take full advantage of that. I actually think I'm going to um, get a hotel room to stay in Atlanta one of the nights, just so I can like take in the whole experience. Because I live about. Call it 45 minutes to an hour north of the city. Okay. So if you do get a hotel room, get it for the first night. That way you can, I, th- I want to say it's the first night. That way you can attend the AWS president's dinner because that's yes. really cool. And I'm going to dress like a welder because I heard that worked really well for you when you went. No, do not do that. I was, I will not talk about that on air. Um, <laughs> but no, it's like usually a suit and tie. There was one year that I was kind of like forced against every fiber of my being to show up in my work boots and blue jeans. <laughs> oh my gosh, I laughed so hard in that episode when you were talking about it because I could just tell that 
that really oh, was not. It irked me. And I had, the thing was, I had a suit and tie and dress shoes back in my room. And I was like, I can get dressed right now. Then, nope, don't do it. Oh, very well. You could be like Clark Kent. Like, yeah, change just like, second. boom, done. <laughs> and I had plenty of time to do it. But yeah, yeah, I will not, I will not show up looking like a welder. Not that, not that I mean, there's anything just, wrong with it because I mean you're in a room full of welders, but it's like it's it's an elaborate event. It's a very nice event, you know. Like the president's dinner is a, it's a welcome welcome to Fabtech. You know, it's a big kickoff. Mm-hmm. It's very formal. It's very nice. It's a good time. Mm-hmm. You get to network with a lot of people, um, and then as you get further into AWS, I mean that that night's awesome because it's literally like a family reunion. You get to okay. like hang out with everybody that you haven't seen for you know the, the you know since the last Fabtech essentially. Mm -hmm. because people are coming from all over the U S to attend Fabtech. And then, you know, if they're AWS members or, you know, they're involved with the executive committee, you know, they'll, they'll all be in that presentation or that that dinner in that room. Yeah. It's really cool. I'm excited because it'll be my first Fabtech ever. Really? Um, yeah. Oh man. I'm surprised you didn't go back and like, I think last time it was in Atlanta was what, like 2018, I think. Yep. That was, so I, missed it like i found out about it after it already happened i was in the welding program and somebody was like oh yeah pictures from fabtech and i was like what is that what is that it looked it looked incredible though it just looks like a huge expo for all things welding and in just like construction and yeah it's it's definitely a fun time and then like like i said it's a it's a big family reunion and then you can one of the cool things is is um i don't know if you're aware that you probably aware of this now but if you're an executive member for an AWS section, you actually get a week of full class or free classes. One of the years that I was, um, my, my section, I think it was prior to me going up or prior to me becoming, um, a section member or a section leader, uh, I got selected and I won a scholarship to, you know, it's like, here, here's X amount of dollars to go use for education. So when I went, to, I went up to, um, Fabtech in Atlanta, I, I took a bunch of free classes. You know, I, like I had three full days of classes that I didn't have to pay for that I got continuing education credits for. So if you if you that's have amazing. a CWI, you know, that that's a good way to get in there and get some classes and make up some of those hours. Definitely those PDH hours. And yeah, and it's a good time, that's too, because awesome. once you're done with the class, you can always pop out to the showroom floor or like during lunch, you know, because you get like an hour long lunch. I would like I I just run right down to the showroom and like go, you know, check out the grinders and the new tables that are coming out and the different welding machines that are there. Uh, it's, it's really a good time. It's definitely worth the trip. Oh, for sure. I actually was thinking about going to the one in Chicago and then at the last second, like it just wasn't going to work out with my, I didn't have enough time to ask off at Fortis, but um, yeah, I'm definitely going to ask off that entire week and hope that they can get me a sub because I'm going to take advantage of those classes. There you go. So that, Case in point, like as an educator, like you want mm-hmm. to expand and grow your knowledge and stay up to date with the newest technologies. I wrote it up as a proposal for my school to send me up there. And then mm-hmm. I used that, um, the scholarship that I received through the AWS to pay for the classes. So my school only had to pay for like the hotel and the travel. They didn't have to pay exactly. for the classes. And then I got, you know, the benefit of earning these industry recognized credentials and certificates while I was up there. So it's a, it's a win-win for you and the benefit. college. Yeah. Exactly. So your school gets a benefit from it. Okay. There's, yeah, we, we can talk. There's a lot of stuff you can do to like get the college to support you and, and fund your trip to go up there. It's definitely worth yeah, they, it though. And they are definitely very supportive. Like we became an educational institution, American Welding Society educational institution in August. Nice. Um, they were super supportive in that process. And um, every step of the way, they're always whatever we need they'll they'll be there to assist do you actually hooked me up with those strong arm or strong hand tools yeah the that, free tools? we just got our package i think monday or yeah i think it was monday Ew, it's a pretty good haul that's I'm a super nice setup impressed. Isn't it? yeah and the students it was like christmas they just got so excited yeah we, we passed everything around took like a shop photo and i kept just pulling things out of the box and i've got 15 students and each one of them already have two things in their hand i'm like nope you can hold more you know just exactly. so you can get like a photo but that was that was a pretty cool opportunity to to be able to get that stuff definitely you were like oprah like you get a tool and yeah. you get a tool you get a clamp and you get a grasshopper and you get you know, like just passing stuff out it yeah, was really neat it. exactly that's awesome yeah so like what are you looking forward to most going to fabtech this year 
just getting to meet so many people that I've, I feel like I already know, but that I have been introduced to on Instagram, um, incredible creators and artists. And then also just getting to see up close and being able to touch a lot of the tools that I've been seeing on online, like, uh, the hypertherm plasma cutters. I want to, you know, test one of those bad boys out and I want to meet Dabs Wellington and, um, just get to see all my friends again. I get to see you and get to see Bob and, um, it, like you said, it is like a family reunion. Yeah. That's my favorite thing yeah. about the welding community. It, it feels like there's so many people in it, but at the same time, it's so close. Yeah. It's, it's a very, like I, I tell, you know, students and, and just everybody all the time, like the welding community, it, it seems like it's massive, but it's actually very small and it's very mm-hmm. tight knit. So, you know, and a lot of times we know the same people, you know, like I got to hang out with some folks over in, uh, in Houston and I was like, oh yeah, we know a lot of the same people just through our dealings with AWS. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Fabtex is, it's, it's a great, like, even before I became involved with my local section, like I was still going to Fabtech. I was, and that was before, like I was with weld.com before I did arc junkies. I was always trying yeah. to find a way to go to Fabtech just because all the cool tools that are there, you get to try stuff out and demo it. Um, last year, Jason with fireball tool was testing out his new vice. And so he had Ooh. like a little pressure meter inside of the vice and yeah. like whoever got the highest amount of pressure per day, won something. And then whoever got the highest amount of pressure over the entire show, I think actually got to win one of the vices. So oh, awesome. yeah, and you can win all kinds of cool, crazy gear. I mean, like, um, Weld medals online. They were giving out welding machines every single day in a raffle. Um, what? Yeah, there was. We had some weld competitions up there. I mean, it's it's a good time, it, especially if you're a welder. And then like all the after hour events and stuff like that. So we did um, last year. We had the obviously we had the president's dinner. We already talked about that, but we also did AWS yep. puts on arcs and ales, which is another I saw good. That. that looks really cool. It's yeah. another good event to go hang out with and you know meet other welders and hang out and have a drink after hours. And I mean, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that's, you know, during the show and then after the show and then by Thursday or, you know, yeah, I think Thursday this year is when it, when it ends, you're like, yep, Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go home. It was good seeing everybody. Take it easy. I'm, I'm out. Yep. I'm tapping out. I'm going to go take a nap. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I think it was Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday afternoon. I just like dipped back to the room. I did the old Irish goodbye and I can do that because I got a red beard, but I like, I I dipped out like very quietly didn't tell anybody, just mm-hmm. went back to the room and took like a two hour power nap. I was like, man, I am exhausted because you're, you're wide open yeah. the whole time and the show is massive and you still don't get to see it all. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to bring like extra Red Bull. There you go. Just to power through. Yeah. I was, like, through. I was drinking black coffee all day. I, I should have had an IV hooked up to me. Yeah. Mainline. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so what are the, what are some of the stuff that you got, you all are doing in Atlanta for, like different section meetings. What are you guys doing to bring people in and say, Hey, look, we've got a section going on, you know, come on out and, you know, check out what we're doing here. So currently we actually just did an event at mechanical trades Institute, um, in Atlanta, they were having an open house and a welding competition. So the Atlanta section was there. We did a raffle for two Jackson welding hoods. Um, and just kind of, we're there to help the students if they wanted to become a a student member of the American Welding Society, just tell them the benefits. Mm -hmm. We also have, we're doing a fundraiser right now with the Atlanta United. Um, So April, I believe it's April 16th. um, The Atlanta United is going to play Cincinnati and we have gotten a block of tickets so people can go purchase the tickets, use our AWS code, and it'll actually kick back money to our section so that we'll have more money to do, scho- um, I'm sorry, to do welding competitions. Mm. Cause that's what we found. Those are, you know, that's a chance for these students to really show up and show out and show their skills. Um, and so we want to be able to do more events like that because they are so impactful to the students. Cause the first place winner usually gets $500. Um, I think second place gets 250 and then third place gets a welding hood. So yeah, and those have been very successful for us in the past. We want to be able to do even more of those. So we're, uh, the Atlanta United fundraiser, but we're also going to do a skeet shoot coming up. Um, Chase and Austin, our new members are currently working out the fine details for that, but that should be a pretty cool event up in Dawsonville, Georgia. We're going to have a skeet shoot where it's going to be a fundraiser thing. We'll also raffle off um, either a gun case or a 
a grill that the section creates and trying to get some more money into our section so that we can start or continue to give back to the students in the form of, you know, letting them showcase their skills and mm. do different events like that. But we also do technical meetings. We'll go into like we did one at ETD. We go into their plant. They tell us um, how they do things, show us around, give us a facility tour. I really enjoy those. Um, I think it's really cool to go into different, like I've been to Caterpillar, BTD, um, a few other companies that just to see what they bring to the table, like Caterpillar was a really cool facility tour. Yeah. Um, and that was also one of our technical meetings through the Atlanta section. I attended that one before I was actually even a member. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, yeah. We, we got to tour when I was part of the North central section, we got to tour ring power, which is like an arm of Caterpillar. They do all the rental equipment, but they do a lot of the maintenance and stuff right there on site. So we got to tour like their welding area. I mean, they, they showed us the whole place and everybody's looking around like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. And then all of a sudden, you know, everybody starts seeing like the welding equipment and they're like, okay. And then we just hung out there for like the majority of the time. It was unbelievable. They're just a finely tuned machine yeah. at Caterpillar. Um, if you ever find yourself out back this way in Atlanta, um, they've got a plant out in Athens that I'm sure we could get a facility tour. It was unbelievable. They've got this one room where the center part of the concrete is cut out and supported because it um, it's one of their calibration machines and it has to stay within a certain tolerance. So with all the, the vibrations that are going on in the, the rest of the plant, they have to keep that section of the floor from moving. So it was kind of cool to see like, that's pretty neat. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, so we, we did um, typically we, we run the central Florida section. We do a welding competition every year which has mm -hmm. been awesome so far. We've done that for several years now. And then this year we're actually joining up with the West coast section. So Daryl Peterson, who's now the district five director, AWS, his company yep. has like offered up their entire facility for us to come out and do a welding competition. So it's going to be Florida, West coast, central Florida section. We're all getting together. There's going to be, they're doing boy scout welding merit badges there. They're going to do weld demos. They're going to do shop tours, there's a, uh, a student division welding competition. There's a pro division. And then I think there's a team division where they're going to build smokers and stuff. And like yeah. everything's there. The material's there. Like it's just going to be an awesome day of welding and like 100% welding all day. It's going to be freaking amazing. But then we also do um, technical meetings. We've had uh, Rock Mount come out and do some demos on their maintenance rods. We've had Lincoln Electric come out and do some demos on STT. Uh, I've attended a hypertherm demonstration where they came out and, and you know, showed off all their equipment. Flame Tech Scorpion awesome. came out. So if you get link up with Chuck Fott, cause he's an awesome dude. Okay. They came yeah. out and did an awesome presentation. And right before we got to cut everything like Florida, you know, it just rains out of nowhere. It yep. poured down rain for like two hours straight. So oh, no. yeah, it was that, that part sucked. But I mean like the technical information that Chuck was able to like, you know, inform all the members like here's how you safely set up your system here's the type of stuff that you would use for this application it was great and we had a, awesome. we had a blast with it so this year we're getting ready to um i think next thursday we're getting ready to sit down and actually plan out our entire 2022 year nice. trying, trying to catch up from like post covid you know now that everything's starting to reopen you know we can start having technical meetings and the shop tours and all that other stuff so bringing people together again yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the um, big that thing. Welding competition it, that, thing that you guys are, yeah, the welding competition that you guys are doing with Daryl Peterson, I think I might come down for that. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm, he, I don't think I'm going to compete or anything, but just to be there as a spectator, because it sounds like it's going to be a really awesome event. Mm -hmm. um, when I went down to Tampa for, we did a FreshBooks meeting. FreshBooks is a software that the American Welding Society is helping um, sections use, and since I'm the treasurer, I went down to Tampa where they just basically explained how to use it. It's a very user-friendly interfacing software where it links up with the bank so that I don't really have to do anything except for just monitor it um, from time to time. I really loved it. But while I was down there, he took me over to his company, showed me the facility. Um, his The guy he has working for him, Kelly Denmark, he took us around oh, cool. and showed us different things. It was you guys are going to have a lot of fun. I've been so. wanting to like, just go spend the day with Daryl anyway, just like 
pop over to his shop and like check out because he's like, he's a senior CWI, which is something I'm, I'm still, I, I don't think I meet the criteria yet, but I mean, that's, that might be something that I want to aspire to be one day, but I yeah. definitely want to check out his shop because they do a lot of testing. And I mean, they've got all their credentials locked in They're uh, mm-hmm. They just became an accredited fabricating uh, facility through AWS. So I want to see what that looks like. What's, what's that whole system about? And like, just go through and, Daryl's an awesome guy to talk welding with. Like, if you really want to get deep into the weeds on something, Daryl's the guy to talk to. He really is. But he's also just such a, a nice guy. Um, very personable. Like, you meet him for five minutes and you think, okay, I've known you my whole life. Yeah. He's that kind of guy. Yeah. But he took me around and showed me some of the testing. I actually had a, a company out there that was doing an x-ray. And Daryl was just like, oh, you want to see how it's done? You think you want to be a CWI? Let's go. I'll show you the truck. So we did. We walked right up into his truck. He showed me where they keep um, the little pigtail for the radiation and how they take the slides. And it was very informative. And then he took me inside um, one of their little buildings on the property. And he had to review someone's um, was looking at some x-rays. Mm. And they asked for Daryl's opinion. So we like went in there and they put the x-ray on the thing and he's pointing out which inclusions are what and what's a shadow or what's really there i thought that was really cool to be a fly on the wall for that was awesome to watch daryl do his thing basically right just daryl in his natural environment exactly it was yeah. awesome and he's a super smart guy so we just um i went to the skills usa competition the regionals over at marshman tech my buddy brian legalio or bingo welds on instagram he teaches over mm-hmm. there. So for the past couple of years, I've volunteered to go out and, you know, be part of their skills competition, you know, be a judge and everything. The cool thing is, yeah. is that's where I met Daryl Peterson. Uh, well, I, I didn't meet him there, but I got to see him there again. And then Lee Middleton, who runs the, um, the, the pipe fitters union over on Tampa side. And I mean, both of those okay. guys are just brilliant. And it's like, man, I, I like, I like being the dumb guy in the room, you know, just kind of sitting back and listen to conversations between like, two people that have been at this for a while. I mean, they've, they've oh, yeah. been in welding longer than I've been alive. So it's just like, that's the point where I just kind of sit back, close my mouth, and soak open my ears, in, yeah. and just, just soak it in. I'm like, just kind of like eavesdropping, but I'm like right there with them. And it's, yep. it's a good way to pick up like different information. And like, like I said, if I have a welding question, I can, you know, text Daryl or, you know, shoot him a, shoot him a, a, a call or something. And he's like mm-hmm. right there and he can help me like walk me through it. And that's, once again, through the AWS, I got to meet these people. Exactly. The network, they just, you don't even have to throw your net to make your network. No. It's like, as soon as you get affiliated with the American Welding Society, your net's immediately cast for you. Mm-hmm. Have you had a chance to, continue. have you had a chance to go to the, um, the Instructors Institute? I have not with Rick Polanin. I really want to. That's an awesome event. That's where I originally, that's so like, the people that I, I listed off earlier, like Stephanie and Jeremy and Hugo and like uh, Travis and all them, that's where we got mm-hmm. to meet originally. And that's since awesome. that, since that conference, we've all become like really, really good friends. And that was back in like 2016. So, I mean, oh, it's, it's been a while, you know, but I mean, we have yeah. like this really tight knit connection and that's our network, you know? So if we need something, you know, all of us are, you know, we're, we're spread out all over the United States, but we're a phone call or a text away. You know, if yeah. I know if I got to get a student placed in anywhere locally where they're at, not a problem. It's done. Same thing. You know, they can call me up. We try to meet up every year at FabTech. You know, not everybody can always get there. Uh, but yeah. I, I think Atlanta, we're going to get the whole crew back together. But it's, I mean, just the network you get to meet. But the Instructors Institute was a really awesome opportunity for me just as a welding instructor to be able to, to attend that event. And we mm-hmm. got to, you know, figure out how to design West or lesson plans. Uh, another cool thing was we had a welding competition while we were there. So they, oh, they put cool. like different groups of welding instructors together and we all competed as a group. Uh, but then we did like an oxy fuel brazing uh, competition on your own. Mm-hmm. They also had raffles and it was just an entire awesome. week of, you know, networking and connecting and developing relationships with other welding instructors and kind of seeing, you know, the similarities and the differences, you know, between the programs and like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with this issue how are you all handling it? Because it sounds like, you know, you had the same issue and you got through it, you know, exactly. so you, you get to pick I mean, where else are you going to go to pick the brains of other welding instructors? It's, it's, exactly. a, it's a small, small community and not as tight knit as I'd like it to be. 
yeah. it's because we're all so spread out. We never get to interact with one another. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, I'm definitely going to look into, I think they've got another one coming up. I think it's in July yep. this it's year. In, yeah, it's in July. So the cool thing, I'm, I'm actually going to go down there and do some podcasts this year during the Welding Instructors Institute. Okay, very cool. And then I'm going down like the week after as part of the um, leadership symposium. So that'll be kind of neat too. Yeah. And the leadership symposium, that's a really, just the way that they get um, 22 people from the different districts and then five students and they put you in a room and you're immediately just kind of thrown into it. Like they had the brain activity games or whatever they were, mm -hmm. um, skill activities where we had to immediately like icebreakers. We became a close knit group immediately that first day. Yeah. So yeah. that'll be a cool event. For it's you. a fun event. So what do, what do you have, what do you have like coming up next as far as like what you guys have going on with your section? So the next thing coming up with us is going to be that, um, the Atlanta United and our fundraiser. We okay. do have, um, I think we have another welding competition coming up, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on the dates. I think it's in March or it might be in April, but I need to, you know, check back in with Jay and see exactly when that is but we do have quite a few things on the schedule for 2022 um in the form of um technical meetings just regular section meetings and uh welding scholar or welding competitions okay and there's there's a lot do you guys do um scholarships at the competitions so we do we offer um a 500 dollars scholarship for first place and we offer a 250 or yeah 250 Oh, okay, so the scholarships for were place. AWS scholarships. Yes. Okay, um, nice. The, well, the $500 scholarship is from the AWS Direct. I think it's from the foundation, if I believe, yeah, I believe that's correct. And then the 250 is from our section. We have our operating account, and then we have our own scholarship account. So we write a check out of our scholarship account for the second place winner. And then the welding hood is donated from the American Welding Society. Oh, cool. For third place. Nice. Are you planning on attending uh, Skills USA this year at all? So I'm thinking about it. I think it's uh, here in Atlanta. It's going to be at the World Congress Center. I, that's what I was trying to find the location. I couldn't find exactly where it's going to be located at, but the dates are June 20th through the 24th. Yeah. And so my, since it's here in Atlanta, I'll definitely go to that one. Yeah. I, I might pop up there to that one. Uh, my buddy Charlie Cross with Lincoln, he's been like, telling me he's like yeah you got to come up here and like check out this event and maybe judge or you know maybe just sit back and spectate this year and then you know come back the following year and you know get get involved with it and i, I think that's something that would be really cool i competed in skills back when it was uh vica the, the, okay. like, now i'm dating myself it was a uh, vocational industrial clubs of america and i i like i didn't even place in regionals i was a horrible welding student and uh, <laughs> so so there's hope that's people funny. um but yeah, so like I, it's it's really cool to like go to these events and just be there to give back and support and you know kind of see how the whole thing runs and just watch these these young men and women that are like amazing amazing welders, you know, incredible at, at such a young age. Yes, that's what's so incredible. I actually went. They didn't have it last year. They had canceled it. I went the year before that. Um, it's an unbelievable event. Like huge space. Um, all these different companies come in and they have the skills is right in the middle of the competition. So I came on the first day and it was uh, linear tech, not the campus that I went to, but the Hall County campus actually had a team competing. So I was there for the, uh, the Atlanta section, but I kind of like, creeped over to where the linear tech welders were. And I just watched them do their thing. It was pretty incredible. Yeah. They had to go off a blueprint and build it within a set time limit and, at the end, they started bringing all of their products to be lined up with all the other competitors. And it was kind of cool to see where one team focused on the wrong part. Mm -hmm. And then the other teams that just absolutely knocked it out of the park. I don't know how you could pick a winner from some of those. It was a tight competition. Yeah. And, and they do all kinds of different stuff. So I, I'm interested to like go up there and check it out and see how it's all, you know, how they do that. Cause I've seen like the vessels that they build. You know, they have to do like uh, they have to do all the different processes on one piece. So you've got like gas metal arc welding, flux core arc welding, shield of metal arc welding, gas tungsten, like all on one piece for steel. Yeah. And then they'll also do a stainless and an aluminum. But like just mm -hmm. to see the talent that these young men and women have. And then they'll yeah. take this pressure vessel, you know, the steel one, 
and they'll pressurize it up to a thousand psi. And like I, I've I've, always, I've seen I've seen the vessels, but I've never seen the competition. You know where they're in there like scrambling, like dialing the machine in and getting everything set up and welding everything out. And it's like I want to see that determination, that drive, that focus. You know of of these different competitors that you know go in there and compete for you know a shot at the world skills. Exactly. See that grit in action, just yeah. absolutely grabbing the bull by the horns and getting it done. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm looking for. I'm. I, I'm slowly talking myself into going it's hard to like break away from everything that i have to do but i think that would be a worthwhile event definitely well if you're here definitely let me know because i'll be there okay are you going to the excel welding competition this year i think it's going to be i am in october again uh up in, in dallas Georgia. Dallas again. yeah yes um i've been talking with daryl galloway with the excel group and i definitely want to be there i don't think i'm going to compete because we competed as a professional group, me and my instructors at Fortis. Mm. Uh, but I don't think I'll do that again. That was definitely a really cool event. I had so much fun building the train with, you know, my buds. Mm-hmm. But um, it was an just an awesome event to be there as a spectator. So I'm kind of looking forward to next year just being there for the Atlanta section and also as a spectator. Yeah, that yeah, was definitely a fun event. I mean, just seeing like all the young kids come in there and, and like compete, you know, they, they all got to build like a grill and then, you know, we had to go through the whole judging thing. But the cool thing was they had other things going on during the competition. So they had like another competition for like the straightest weld with a 532 7018. Uh, Fronius yep. was out there doing weld demos. They had a little competition going on. Uh, Kemaline was out there doing cutting. So you had to cut like a bevel and then you had to cut a straight edge. And, you know, yep. like who could do the straightest and the cleanest bevels and all that stuff. So it was a good time for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. And Franius gave away a welding machine. Yep. I think they gave that away a hood cool. and a welding machine and some PPE. Yep. The I think my favorite uh, build, student build, was the Lincoln Tombstone yes. grill. That was so cool. That was an From awesome Georgia build. Trade School. Yeah, that was really yeah. cool. I mean, anytime Georgia Trade School is involved with anything here in Atlanta or anywhere across Georgia, for that matter, they show up and show out. Their students are very professional, um, and they're just there to weld and take home first place trophies, apparently, because that's what they do. <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> no, I thought it was a, it was a very unique build because, like every the other ones, kind of had like a very similar tiered concept, and then like mm-hmm. you see a Lincoln Tombstone, you're like, this is a welding competition, and their grill is probably one of the most identifiable pieces of welding equipment that's that's out there exactly and it was like i mean they had all the the detail on there yeah it's like everybody else's was kind of more catered to functionality where theirs was it's gonna work but it's also gonna look badass doing you can cook your chicken in there but it also looks like a lincoln tombstone yeah yeah exactly that that was really cool well, Rachel, I want to mm-hmm. thank you for your time. Uh, go ahead, plug your social medias. Where can people find you? Where can they find out more information on your the AWS section out of uh, Atlanta? All right. So if you want to find more information about the Atlanta section of the American Welding Society, we have a Facebook page. It's AWS Atlanta on Facebook. We also have an Instagram account. It is also AWS Atlanta. Um, we... So those are the two main things that we use as far as to get information out to our section members. I'm going to have like a little selfless plug here. I am the tiny welder on Instagram, TikTok. I'm trying to work on that Facebook, but don't don't bother with Facebook. We'll try to help you grow your gram though. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yes, please follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to make it grow. I started it back in March and I'm already up to somewhere over 2000 followers. Um, but it's, it's really incredible. The people that reach out to me and ask me questions about, you know, I'm, I'm running this in my class and I don't know why this is happening and we can kind of troubleshoot what the cause could be. Um, and the friendships that I've made throughout it, like Ray Ripple and, um, Tiffany, um, from Welding Women Syndicate, like yeah, I just, Tiffany Von Orf, I think is how you pronounce her yeah. last name. Yeah. She's yeah, at, so and, if um, you're, if you're coming down, um, Anytime in March, we're mm-hmm. doing Ink the Bay. What is that? It's a tattoo convention, but a bunch of welders are showing up. So Welding oh, Women Syndicate's so going to be there. Travis Field's going to be there. I think Bob Moffat's going to be there. I'm going. That's uh, cool. Bingo Welds is going to be there. We, we got a lot of Wally Welds is going to be there. So it's just going to be like a big welding 
or it's a tattoo convention with a huge 50 foot by 50 foot welding tent. Okay. So, Ink the Bay. Ink the Bay. It's, I think, the 25th through the 27th of March. Okay. That's actually my brother's uh, birthday. He's born on the 27th. Bring him but, down with you, and you guys can get tatted, and you can weld some stuff. You know, I might just do that, because he's got three young girls at home, like, under all under the age of five. So he's probably he's gonna want to get away for his birthday weekend. Yeah, take take him down to Tampa, and if you know if he's not into tattoos, you get fishing, you get surfing, you get all that good stuff over there. Yeah, exactly. He'll find something. Nice. Well, teach him to weld. How about that? There you go. (laughs) Well, it was great having you on the podcast. I appreciate you taking out your time out of the day to you know talk about your experience with the AWS and how it's helped you grow you know as a student professionally and personally. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I love any opportunity to sing the American Welding Society's praises because they have given so much to me and will continue to help me grow and achieve goals as long as, you know, as long as I want to do that. And so as any as many people as I can bring to the American Welding Society, that's what I want to do. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more benefits than what's listed in the pamphlet. 100%. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into this month's episode of Weld Wednesdays with the AWS, brought to you by the American Welding Society. For more information on how you can become a member, head on over to aws.org and click on the membership tab. There's plenty of benefits, including grants and scholarships for students and educators, discounts on seminars, code books and publications for members, and free admission to Fabtech for students and individual members. Be sure to tune in the first Wednesday of every month for new episodes of Weld Wednesdays with AWS and every Monday for new episodes of the Art Junkies podcast. Stay safe out there, and until next time, make every weld better than your last.